This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Hone and it's Wednesday, so that means it's time for another deck history. In this series, I talk about prominent deck archetypes that have found success at Magic's highest level of competition, and I trace them from their origins all the way through to the modern day. As usual, a poll determined the topic of this video with Scapeshift being the winner this time around. If you want to have a say in next week's topic, don't forget to vote in the poll on the Community tab. Anyway, as we've seen with many decks, this one gets its name from a single card, Scapeshift, which was originally printed in 2008's Morning Tide. This sorcery lets you sacrifice as many lands as you want, and then you search up that many land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. That might sound like kind of a silly effect. Why give up your lands just to get the same number, right? Well, importantly, it lets you search up any land, and not just basics. Scapeshift thus allows for some serious land-based combos. At one time or another, Scapeshift decks have found success in Standard, Pioneer, Extended, Modern, and Legacy. In this video, we'll take a look at the various ways in which Scapeshift changed over time in each of these formats. Scapeshift is a bit unusual in that the first decks to really try to take advantage of its combo potential were in Legacy, not Block or Standard. In fact, Scapeshift decks didn't find any success in either of those formats as a result of the 2008 printing in Morning Tide. There just wasn't anything you could combo with it at the time. So, we're going to be going in a different order than usual today, starting with Legacy. In 2010 at the Eternal Championships, Boss Mellis top aided the event with his Eternal Garden deck. While this wasn't exactly a scapeshift deck, the card was an important part of the deck's game plan. More generally, this deck was a lands deck. It ran more than 40 lands and also used Life from the Loam to get serious value out of them. It could use Life from the Loam with Mana Bond to put a ton of lands into play. However, you'll notice the deck doesn't really have a main deck win condition, and that's because of Burning Wish. It lets you grab a card from the sideboard, and that's where Scapeshift comes in. You could wish for it out of your board and win the game on the spot. The plan was to cast Scapeshift and search up some number of Valakut the Molten Pinnacle, a card we're going to see a lot of in this video. Valakut was printed in 2009's Zendikar, and it suddenly meant that Scapeshift actually did something. If you had a bunch of lands in play, like this deck could get into play, and you sacrificed them all to Scapeshift and then searched up a bunch of Valakuts and Mountains, that would be lethal damage out of nowhere. Because the lands all come into play at the same time, every single mountain would do 3 damage for each Valakut you had in play, provided you made sure to get 5 mountains. Funnily enough, Scapeshift didn't do a whole lot in Legacy after this success in 2010, but its success in Legacy would be a sign of things to come in other formats. Extended would be the next format where Scapeshift decks found some success. Extended is a now-defunct rotating format that featured the last several years of cards. Scapeshift decks first found success in the format in 2011. At Grand Prix Atlanta that year, three of the top eight decks were Scapeshift decks. Let's take a look at Christian Valenti's version of the deck. In a lot of ways, Extended Scapeshift was a pretty traditional ramp deck. It ran Cultivate, Explore, Harrow, Colony Heart Expedition, and Rampant Growth. These all let you get around the one land to turn rule and makes it so you get lots of mana quickly. It made sense to go this route because you needed a lot of lands in play for when you cast Scapeshift. In addition to running the Scapeshift Valakut combo, it also ran Prismatic Omen, a card which would make it a little easier to kill your opponent with the Scapeshift Valakut combo since it made all of your lands mountains. But in addition to having the combo kill, the deck could also just power out Primeval Titan or Avenger of Zendikar. The Titan was a great fit for the deck because it was not only a massive creature, it could also help you set up some serious damage with Valakut because it got you two lands when it injured the battlefield and when it attacked. In addition to the red-green scapeshift deck that Christian Valenti used, there was a different kind of scapeshift deck that top-aided Grand Prix Atlanta in 2011, and in fact it won the whole event. Jason Ford's Omen scapeshift didn't really have an alternate win condition when it started ramping. Instead, the deck was a more controlling blue-green variant of scapeshift that was all in on winning with the combo, plus Prismatic Omen. As you can see, the deck ran hardly any mountains, so Prismatic Omen was essential for you to combo off. This does, of course, add another card to the combo, but with four Prismatic Omens around, you didn't need nearly as many lands in play when you cast Scapeshift, so it could go off even sooner. 
The deck also used Oracle of Moldiah for another effect that lets you get around the one land per turn rule, and playing lands off the top of your library is quite strong, as it's effectively drawing cards. Scapeshift decks also put up multiple top eights at the next extended Grand Prix, which was Grand Prix Kobe. However, both of the decks that top aided that event were a bit different from the ones we've discussed so far. These new Scapeshift decks were called Wargate Scapeshift, and the big difference was that it was a Bant deck utilizing the powerful tutor, Wargate. Provided you had the mana, Wargate could search up whatever permanent you wanted and put it onto the battlefield. Generally, you wanted to get Valakut or Prismatic Omen, but it was nice that it could tutor up other things too. This would be the last top 8 for Scapeshift decks in Extended though. This isn't because the deck became bad in the metagame or a card got banned, it's because the Extended format itself was officially retired not long after Grand Prix Kobe. Extended was replaced by the newly created Modern Format, the same Modern Format that still exists today and features all cards from 8th edition forward. Scapeshift decks did not immediately find success in this new format though. When Modern was announced, there was also a preemptive ban list featuring cards from powerful Extended decks that Wizards was concerned would be too strong for this new format. Valakut was one of the cards that got the axe with this initial announcement, and this effectively meant there was no Scapeshift deck in Modern. However, it didn't remain banned for that long, and in September of 2012, Valakit was unbanned, and Scapeshift decks became a very real thing in Modern, and have remained so until the present day. Modern had a lot more cards in it than Extended did, and this meant Modern Scapeshift decks did look a little different from what we've already seen. Hall of Famer Li Shi Tian was the first to top 8 a major Modern event with Scapeshift, which he did in 2012. He went full-on teamer with his version of the deck, but it was still only a little different from what came before. It was largely a control deck with a combo kill involving Scapeshift and Valakut. This version of the deck didn't bother with Prismatic Omen or alternate win conditions, instead looking to win the game simply by searching up Valakuts and Mountains. Most of the early modern versions of Scapeshift looked like this. However, by 2013 there was a new Scapeshift variant. Louis Del Tour top aided Grand Prix Bilbao that year with a four color version of the deck, it had all colors in it except for white. As usual, the deck featured ramp effects, in this case Sakura Tribelder, Farseek, and Search for Tomorrow. It also featured a fair bit of card draw and counter magic, so the colors are different, but the game plan was pretty much unchanged with one exception, the inclusion of Clutch of the Undercity. This spell is overcosted for its base effect, but it's basically upside on a card that can tutor you into scapeshift. Transmute lets you search it up since it has the same mana cost. However, most versions of Scapeshift didn't go the Clutch of the Undercity route, and they largely returned to a Teamer shell without any major changes for a couple of years. In 2015, Scott Lipp piloted an interesting variant of the deck to a top 8 finish at Grand Prix Omaha. His version of the deck was called Valakut Breach, and it was really a red-green ramp deck that had a couple of interesting different angles of attack, in addition to trying to win with Scapeshift. As you can see, the deck has way more creatures than we've seen so far, including Primeval Titan and Emrakul. As we've seen, Primeval Titan pairs quite well with Scapeshift. However, Emrakul is a little bit more of an outlier. So, in addition to the Scapeshift two-card combo, the deck could also use Through the Breach or Summoning Trap to cheat Emrakul or Primeval Titan into play. This made it pretty tricky to counter the deck, as you couldn't simply focus on hating out Scapeshift, since the deck could just win the game with something like Emrakul. From here on, the heavier use of Primeval Titan became the norm, although most versions of the deck didn't also run through the breach at this point. Tien Win top aided Grand Prix Pittsburgh later in 2015 with his take on Scapeshift, which ran a full four Primeval Titans and meant the deck had an alternate win condition if pulling off the Scapeshift combo wasn't possible. As we've seen, the Titan's ability goes quite well with Valakut and makes it so the deck can still do some serious damage using the powerful land. In 2016, Jack Wang top aided Grand Prix Charlotte with a Scapeshift deck that used Bring to Light. Bring to Light couldn't grab your lands, but you could use it to find your Scapeshift, and it gave the deck several additional copies of the most important card in it. It also had the flexibility of being able to grab and cast a bunch of other spells in the deck. While they have never been quite as successful as some of the other modern Scapeshift variants, Bring to Light Scapeshift decks continue to be relevant to today. Later in 2016, Zach Voss piloted a new version of the deck to a top 8 finish at Grand Prix Dallas. In fact, his version of the deck was so different that it wasn't really a scapeshift deck. Instead, the deck was called Titan Shift, 
and it grew out of Scott Lipp's Scapeshift deck we saw earlier, which tried to cheat Emrakul into play. The deck no longer used Emrakul, and instead sought to cheat only Primeval Titan into play with Summoner's Pact or Through the Breach. Instead of being one of the deck's plans for winning the game, in Titan Shift, Primeval Titan is usually the primary way the deck tries to win the game, with Scapeshift as the backup option. As you can see, there's only a single copy of Scapeshift in the deck, so Titan Shift is definitely a better name for the deck. Titan Shift has gone on to coexist with more traditional Scapeshift decks in Modern. From this point on, both of these kinds of decks tend to run both the Titan and Scapeshift, and they mostly just vary in which win condition the deck leans on more. Scapeshift decks didn't change a whole lot for the next several years, but some new cards changed the deck in 2020. Some new creatures found their way into the deck, in particular Arboreal Grazer and Dryad of the Elysian Grove. They both helped you get more lands into play more quickly, and the Dryad also made it so all your lands were mountains, making Valakut particularly potent. While the Grazer doesn't always make the cut in the deck, Dryad of Elysian Grove has gone on to be a pretty important card in modern scapeshift decks in both 2020 and 2021. The deck also features a new land that can combo with scapeshift, Field of the Dead, but to elaborate on that a little more, we'll go ahead and move into talking about our last two formats. But yeah, scapeshift continues to be a very real deck in modern, and it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. So the remaining formats we need to talk about are Standard and Pioneer. Like I said earlier, it might seem like we went kind of out of order here, since we often start with a look at Standard, but Scapeshift decks weren't successful in Standard after its original printing in Morningtide. However, it got reprinted in Core Set 2019, and this led to the creation of Scapeshift decks in both Standard and Pioneer. Let's start with Standard. The first player to pilot a Scapeshift deck to a premier event top 8 in Standard was Hall of Famer Luis Scott Vargas. As you can see, standard scapeshift is drastically different from what we've seen so far. For one thing, there's no Valakut in standard, but that standard format did have a super powerful land that we just saw, Field of the Dead. The deck had a ton of lands with different names, and just like it worked with Valakut, if you searched up some Fields of the Dead and a bunch of lands with different names, it would give you a zombie for every single land with a different name you fetched up because they all enter the battlefield together. This did mean the deck usually had to wait a turn to win, unlike it had to with Valakut, but that was usually fine for Standard. The deck also didn't have something like Primeval Titan, but it could ramp into a pretty potent Hydroid Crassus for a similar outcome. From there, the new Standard Scapeshift deck found significant success. That is, until Field of the Dead got banned in Standard in October of 2019, marking the end of Scapeshift decks in Standard. Decks running Scapeshift also found some success in Pioneer, once again pairing it with Field of the Dead. It is actually a bit of a stretch to refer to these decks as Scapeshift, because this version of the deck only ran a single copy, and was actually more interested in generating value with Hour of Promise, but Scapeshift still gave the deck a way to combo off. So, this was an Hour of Promise deck first, but because Scapeshift played a role in the deck, I thought it worth including here. Ultimately, this deck proved to be too good too, and Field of the Dead ended up banned in Pioneer as well. So, that's the history of Scapeshift decks. Scapeshift continues to be a powerhouse in the modern format, and at various times it has been successful in multiple other formats, to the point that certain cards have had to be banned. It is still legal in formats like Pioneer and Historic, though it doesn't currently have a combo worth doing. Keep an eye on any future lands that are printed, though, because we could see it show up in those formats. So, that does it for this video. If you want to have a say in next week's topic, don't forget to vote on the community tab. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to catch up on the almost 20 other deck histories I've already done, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. And lastly, if you want to give back to the channel, you can on Patreon. Thanks for watching.